Chat. Hey everyone, welcome to Young Adult Catholics, a podcast for young adult Catholics. My name is Janelle. I'm Danny. And I'm Kayan. <laughs> <laughs> and today we are going to be talking about the topic pornography. And today we are very blessed. We have this beautiful sister in Christ. Sister, wait, sister in Christ, um, <laughs> Mylene Ibus. She is going to be our guest speaker. She is going to share her knowledge and wisdom on the topic as well. Before we do that, um, we're going to start off in prayer as always. Yes, uh, let us begin. Father, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Lord God, we just invite you into this conversation of a tough topic, a tough topic, experiencing uh, a tough and addictive drug that is pornography. Help us to really uh, dive deep into the sinful ways and the addiction, the addictive way that it is. Help us to understand that chastity is a life that we should all strive to live, one that allows us to truly be one another as men, and woman of God, and not as objects, not people that we can use, but rather we can uplift. As we um, embark in this conversation, Lord, just help us to say what you need to say. Help us to spread the truth. Help us to spread the message of the church. And we entrust in our blessed mother to do so as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, grace, the Lord is with thee. Christ the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Blessed is the hour of our death. Amen. And all God, all right. Amen. Amen. So, um, little quick background or intro of Mylene. I personally know her from Cassie Fullerton. Me and you now know her from Cassie Fullerton. Um, and I was in the Bible study for my last semester of school there, and she's just such a beautiful woman inside and out. Um, she has a huge love for children. She majors in kinesiology. And <laughs> um, I, I just really admire the strength and um, the beauty of this woman right here and how um, much strength she has to speak uh, out against pornography and just um, the differences that could um, slave us to this world. So the first question that I have for Mylene is um, the basic fun foundational question, how is porn bad? Mm, all right. Um, well, thank you for the three of you for the lovely prayer and introduction. I think my older brother kind of came in a little bit, so sorry about that. If um, the beginning is like, you know, there's like a man who talks in the middle of the prayer. Um, but before, uh, earlier, I was reading up on my catechism, and I actually have why the catechism, not why I think, but why the catechism of the Catholic Church thinks pornography is bad. And essentially what pornography is, um, according to the catechism, two, three, five, four, is that pornography is removing real slash simulated acts from intimacy of partners in order to display them to third parties. And so in the 10 commandments that God gives us, one of them is um, committing adultery. That's one of the, that's one of the sins is like, you shall not commit adultery. It's one of the um, seven deadly sins, right? Is less that um, it's just so deadly and so grave. And pornography is right under that because um, our whole purpose and goal in life is to love. It's to love others. It's to love God. And we often think that the opposite of love is hate, when in reality, the opposite of love is, is lust, because, um, like, love is to be able to give yourself to another person, but to lust, to watch porn, to, master to masturbate, to do any sexual sin or act, is, uh, it's self-seeking, it's very selfish, um, and I mean, we can go more into how um, later on, but essentially, pornography, it's bad, um, especially we as Catholics, we believe it's bad because it, uh, it's an enslavement to our sexual desires and we're not called to be enslaved, we're called to be free, you know, we all want to be free, we all want to be happy in life, so. Yeah, amen. That's true. Yeah. Um, that, 
that right there definitely an estimation right there um but um unfortunately like there are people who believe that like pornography is necessary for certain relationships and um like one of the claims that i've heard is like it's important because it's educational for sexual health um mm -hmm. so how would you respond to that claim um that 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 porn is like that porn is necessary <laughs> Yeah, I think, you know, one thing that I was thinking about all day today is like the purpose of sex is like, because I think that's what porn, that's like where um, we're like, um, like where the differences lie is like how we view sex sex right it's like we live in a very hyper sexualized culture so like we especially in the 21st century century believe that sex is um something that anyone can do everyone can do which is right um but the way that the world has took sex it's uh it's um how do i say this it's like recreated it because the whole purpose of sex is for a man and a woman to come together, right? To be one. And it's a, a very sacred and it's the most intimate thing a man and a woman can engage in. And so when it comes to um, sex, we think that there's all these types of ways to do it. There's all these types, there's a good way of having sex and a bad way of having sex, which is where the sexual health comes in, right? It's like, people want to be experienced in that. People want to know, like, am I doing this right? Oh, and oh, like, maybe I'll turn to pornography because I want to, when my first time having sex with this man or this woman, I want to be good at it. When in reality, I think that it's like, before we go into like sexual health, I think we need to stop and say like, what's the purpose of sex? Because that's where I think people fall into pornography. And that's when they become like enslaved to like all these things. Is that like, um, yeah, sex is for pleasure. It's for just like um, to satisfy that good, it's that good feeling. When no, like sex is good, but it's not something of just the human flesh, it's beyond that. Yeah. It's so sacred and it's so intimate. And um, for someone who wants to educate, them on, educate themselves on sexual health, I think that the best way you need to educate yourself is on what the purpose of sex is, you know, before you go into like the health aspect of it. So, yeah. When we feel like we know that that definition of what sex is really made for, the sacredness, is totally gone from today's culture. Um, I mean, mm -hmm. we can, like one night stands, as you said, with pornography, and I going back to the foundation of it, I think that's what people are forgetting and not super easy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm back on um it's it's a comment you made how we're enslaved you know to sin like we, we shouldn't be enslaved to sin um for mm -hmm. our first audiences can you explain how pornography enslaves us can you explain like what our, what that means to them like in terms of you know god frees us how does sin enslave us and what's pornography's um portion in all of this mm -hmm. Mm. <laughs> dang I have like little uh I like typed up little like notes that I have it from like all the past talks on the side and literally the first one that I looked at talked about enslaved and then the moment like you said that Janelle literally the word chastity just like popped up right in my face <laughs> and so that's a great question um so just like quick like basic one-on-one theology it's like there's a vice and then there's virtue right and uh, pornography is a vice like lust is a vice and the opposite of that is chastity and the way that pornography enslaves us is that um it's it's like we give up that opportunity to to we give up when we're enslaved to pornography we um lose that opportunity to love freely because we have to remember why we were created like we were created to like a man and a woman were created to be in a relationship with each other right the whole purpose of sex is for a man and a woman to come together in marriage and to make those uh, wedding vows present in their bed to say that i give myself to you fru uh, freely faithfully totally wholeheartedly and fruitfully and when you engage in pornography it's not free like there's no freedom in this some people are coerced into it some people are forced into that business it's not fruitful 
like there's no children that are being born from it there's no life that is being given in pornography there's no um totalness right most of the times I've heard that like when people struggle with addictions it's because um they're trying to fill up an emptiness inside of them right like when people are addicted to things they want to make that hurt go away so they'll turn to something that'll make that pain be like for it to make that pain go away temporarily so they're not total and it's not wholesome and so um if the opposite of uh lust and the opposite of pornography is chastity um then it's like the definition of chastity is to have that self-mastery right of our sexual desires and that's even in the catechism like it's in the catechism of the, ch uh, of the church it's that chastity is to um have that to be in control of our sexual desire because what pornography does is it takes that sexual desire and it is no longer you who's in control of it it's that desire that's in control of you and the thing is is that god didn't make us to be slaves he made us to be free and so it's like the way that god created a man and the way that god created a woman is for them to control the things that they do for them to control the things that they watch for them to control their desires and when you engage in pornography you mess with the enemy and you mess with the devil right and you give them that freedom to take your sexuality and to become a slave to that because all you want to do is like walk on and like like any other addiction right like an alcohol addiction like you just like there's this thrill and there's this rush and you want more and more and more of it and then all of a sudden where's the self-mastery it's not there and like that's why when people watch pornography and when it's exposed to them like they can't stop like they just want more and more and more of it and they're like this is how sex is supposed to be this is how um relationships are supposed to be and we become a slave to the one thing god has called us to be free in like our sexuality and like yeah i'm just very for it and i'm just very for like talking about that because i think it's one of the darkest things in the catholic church is that no one likes to talk about pornography it's so uncomfortable but there's so much people who are enslaved to that you know and it's it's crazy so yeah but um i know you say like if you can't say no to it you're a slave to it like if you can't stop and that's where like the whole addiction comes in you know if you can't mm -hmm. see yourself, like that's when you become a slave to it and then just a quick comment before I pass it to you guys is um, what you, it came to the, um, when you're talking about the types of love, like free, total, faithful, and fruitful, when it comes to the free of it, like a lot of people are against sex trafficking, but they don't realize that like mm -hmm. Pornhub, that pornography sites, mm -hmm. how much that sex trafficking going on. Yeah, um, yeah. That not many people yeah. realize, or they do realize it, but they don't want to say anything because. Yeah. They, and it adds into the whole like oh i don't know they just don't want to support it yeah there's like yeah there's like a spirit of muteness mm -hmm. like everyone knows it but it's like like the mute and deaf man in the bible like you can't like you don't say anything and that's that's problem that's uh that's the enemy it's the devil in play yeah, yeah i wanted to go back <clears throat> to where you were first talking about like i've heard different but no, i don't think there's a real wrong answer but um the opposite of love i've heard is use and also yeah mm -hmm. love is mm -hmm. um and so i mm -hmm. i'll go down the road of use first obviously it's one thing to like i guess mentally have a thought but then to actually put actions behind that lustful thought in watching pornography or taking advantage of someone um yeah. already really bad and then indifference in terms of, like we know we're watching porn and we know what like, could be sexual and like, maybe trafficking going on. We're like, no, I don't really care. I'm not going to think about that. I'm just going to, I'm not hurting anyone. I'm just watching porn. But it's like, you could either be watching a girl who's being molested. You could be a girl or guy or girl who is in the video um, that's being molested, uh, just being taken advantage. You could be watching a video of someone who's already dead. You don't know who you're watching. Um, and so there's a lot of disgusting things that go on. And, I thought of John 15, 15, because we're talking about slavery. And in John 15, 15 goes this, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything I've learned from my father, I have made known to you. So with, with this slavery, 
it's you, you just don't know <laughs> you you can't serve two masters either god or the devil it's a point blank as that is and uh, I think so much of the Catholic faith is afraid to talk about this stuff, but this is destroying souls. And going back to what you were saying too, uh, the world creates this new version. I would go and say it distorts the truth. That's what the devil mm-hmm. is. He's mm-hmm. great at deceiving. He's great at lying. And he's great at distorting. Mm-hmm. And so he always turns God's goodness into something evil, kind of sprinkles a little bit of good just to like entice you. But his the real evil and the roots of it they come to light and you see his darkness. So yeah, it's definitely one of those things where you're, it's so enticing. It's really enticing. You know, I used to think, man, like I'm just watching porn. My parents won't find out. No one's going to find out. I'm not hurting anyone. But uh, I started to realize it started to change me. It started to change how I treated myself, how I treated others. And I started to be more selfish. I started to, instead of being loving, I started to use people. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's that for me has helped me to like want to stop this what's how what's been the push to for you to put an end to this and like advocate like hey guys this is not good so what's been your motive um god i think i remember that my first time um going to a porn talk was at seek it was by uh, kelsey scope it's uh specifically for women women called uncompromising purity and I was very hesitant on going at first, but one of my good friends put um, all the women go because even it's like, even if you aren't the one who's struggling with um, pornography or masturbation, then you may know someone who's struggling with it. And so I went, I heard a lot of good things and there was a couple of things that I was able to personally relate on at that talk. And then literally, uh, I think a week later, um, one of my good, good friends came out to me stating that they were addicted to pornography and just one by one um the lord has put like some of the people who i'm just very very close to some of the people who are most dear and near in my heart um to just like reveal to me that these people that i love they struggle with addiction and i see how much it hurts them and i see how much it hurts um even like the people in my family like i know and I it's like just something that sometimes like you can't hide because you know when you're on the internet like it just pops up and so I think the reason why I guess I'm just so passionate against them and advocating for the end to pornography is because I've just seen how much it's hurt so many people in my life and like when you love someone um right like when you're just you want someone to go to heaven. You want someone to know who Christ is. You want them to be happy. But it's like you see that they're so enslaved by this thing that is holding them down. Like enslavement, right? Like they're so enslaved and they feel like they can't stop. They feel like they can't do it anymore. Like they feel like they have no option. They feel disgusting. They feel dirty. They feel shameful. That's the struggle with like young adult Catholics and just anyone who struggles with pornography. It's like it hurts them first and like, biggest it hurts their heart it hurts their mind it hurts the way that they act and there's so much shame there's so much shame in coming back to God and I have just seen the way that it's hurt the people in my life and I just get so angry sometimes I just get so upset and I'm like Lord like this is not okay because I want this person to know who you are but they are too scared to go back to you because they think that the sexual sin is bigger than you and then um like I heard today about the woman caught in adultery right in the bible and how uh she's caught in the middle of the act and like jesus um he writes in the sand and says to the lady like whoever um whoever is not of sin like something will throw the stone at you and no one throws the stone at her and it's like if jesus can love the woman who committed adultery And if Jesus can love the woman who was caught in the middle of the act, then what makes us think that like we can't run back to him in that? And so it's like, I'm very for it because it's like, people need to know that. There needs to be more people who will go to those who are struggling with pornography and be like, hey, you struggle with this and you're a sinner, but you know what? The Lord still loves you. And like, you still have a place in the Catholic, you still have a place in the church. Like you still have a place in God's kingdom. Um, And I just, 
don't think there's enough people who are for that. And so I want to be one of those people. Definitely. And um, something yeah. that I want to just like mention, you were saying like young adult Catholics, like they struggle with it or even um, just anyone who's been exposed to it. Like, I just want to bring up how like even children as young as like seven or eight mm -hmm. are exposed to it. I, I heard firsthand from um, someone who's very close to me who grew up with brothers and shared with me that like at a very young age, um, maybe in kindergarten or something like his, well, because he's the youngest out of three brothers, like he shared that um, both of his brothers exposed it to him, saying mm -hmm. like in order for you to, be able to watch something like this. And just from the get go, I kind of brainwashed him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That boy who's now a man, like he, mm -hmm. he felt like just the dire effects of it on him, like during high school that he decided, like, no, this isn't for me, you know. And yeah, like just the horrible socialization of it. I just hate it so much. How ingrained it is in society to the point, like Pornhub has mm -hmm. um, so many viewers and so much money that it's like it feels like almost impossible for them to be taken down but like we have to keep on trying um mm -hmm. something that i also want to ask you is um so you watch you you went to the kelsey scope talk like I was mm -hmm. um on uncompromising purity and it blew me away because i learned about things that i never yeah recognized yeah. like um just like notice about myself and mm -hmm. I remember really that talk well guys we'll make sure to put a link of it in um yes I have it I have the link so <laughs> but one of the things distinction between implicit and explicit pornography mm -hmm. um do you remember that part of her talk like she talks about how um there is explicit where it's like in porn of like it's just out there but also implicit how it's so ingrained in society that it's easily seen in movies tv shows mm -hmm. books um can you possibly talk more about that yeah 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 i like briefly remember her talking about that um was it explicit and explicit. say that one more time in implicit. I implicit implicit okay yeah um so you're cutting off a little bit and so um yeah I I I briefly remember her talking about that and I think that uh it's like it's like well like pornography has come to the point in the world where it's like literally everywhere like it's it's like on the videos it's explicit right it's on the websites, and then it's gotten even to like like to be so normalized, right? It's in Hollywood, it's on Netflix, it's on Hulu, it's on YouTube, and there's so many other ways. It's like, there's like the big, the big ways such as like all the porn websites, right? And then there's all like the little subtle ways such as like in your normal everyday lives. And I think that one of the reasons why pornography is not talked about enough is because of those implicit ways, because of how it's like ingrained into like our everyday lives again, such as like social media, YouTube, Hulu, um, movies, right? Even in like PG-13 movies, even in like high school movies, it's like people won't say that's pornography, but if it's a video and if it's, uh, again, from what the catechism says of two people making love and um, somebody deriving sexual like pleasure and enjoyment out of that, then that's devaluing the value that's devaluing the purpose of our human sexuality and that you might as well just label that as porn and it's so like normal and people and like I think it we don't talk about it because we're so numb and so blind and that's why a lot of people who like are in that sexual sin they don't like there may be this like shame to want to go back to God because they just can't see him because blessed are the pure of heart for they shall see God, right? Like they just, they just can't see him. And like those who are not in the faith, those who don't have that relationship with God, maybe not, maybe like, as in like, they just like, 
aren't there yet or they just fell out of their relationship with God, got into um, pornography to watching all these videos on sex. And it's like, how can I see God when I'm so like blinded by the sexual sin that I see every single day in my life, that I see everywhere, anywhere, starting from like middle school, starting from high school, you know? And it's just, it's everywhere. Yeah, I listened to a, a talk and I'll try to put it on our um, resource list at the end. I have to find it, but I'm pretty sure it was from 2018. And they said the average age um, that a boy is introduced to pornography is eight years old. And that broke my heart. Old. Yes, that is very true. I was like, they're not even mature enough, and this is already tainting them. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like if you have to do something, you were talking about shame earlier. You have to do something in darkness. Like I think that that means a lot, like symbolically too, right? Um, our mm -hmm. sins come to light so that you know we can be transformed. And so there's this friend I have who told me, you know, he struggled with porn. Um, and something he says, he said was like, honestly, I didn't know it was bad. Like all my friends were doing it. My cousins were doing it. And so it just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Things is when people don't realize that it's a sin, when people don't realize, mm -hmm. and that's like the, the, one of the first things we have to do is call it out so that we can say, mm -hmm. sin. but guess what? God loves you and wants you back. And, um, he's here to help you kind of thing. So, yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you a question too, and I don't know if we touched base on this already, but can you explain, or like, I don't know, do you have any information of how pornography ruins marriages or lead to divorce, stuff like that? Oh, yes. Oh my gosh, I was reading on the statistics on this earlier. <laughs> um, yeah, I, the number, yeah. Um, I know definitely like, um, one of my favorite, favorite Catholic speakers out there, her name's Heather Kim, and she's very open about her marriage, and she, um, she, I look up to her so much, but she uh, was one of the first person I know, and like, I look up to her, she's so devout, she's so Catholic, but she's very open about her marriage with her husband, and very um, open about um, how they went through like a rough patch in, um, through a rough patch, because uh, she found out after they got married that he was, um, still addicted to pornography even though he told her that she was clean or he, yeah he told her that like he was clean and like he was still enslaved to it and um I just have heard so many speakers like talk on this and I know it's like at least the top three things that ruins marriages and if we look at the statistics for marriage in the United States it's like 50% of marriages end up in divorce and if it's like you look at the other 50% right who are not divorced probably only like 20% of those couples are actually happy with their marriage and um what pornography does is that it goes whether it's the man or the woman who's addicted to pornography what it does is that first and foremost like pornography it uh it hurts you because it hurts your image of what the human being should be right? When you watch pornography, you're not watching a son or daughter of God. You're watching like sexual pleasure. You're becoming a slave and you're feeding that like sexual desire that you want to feed, that you want to build. And so when it comes to someone who's married, a, like let's say a man who's married, right? Um, he, when he's engaging in pornography, he begins to not just see like that woman in the video as someone as sexual pleasure and just a sexual object he begins to see his wife and possibly all the women in his life as sexual objects and not because he um he chooses to but that's just the consequence of the sin every sin has a consequence and like we don't talk about that we don't know that but every sin has a consequence and um the consequence of that sin is that you begin to um again go back to enslave you begin enslaved to that and as a result you don't love your wife as freely as you should be and we go back to that purpose right what's the purpose of us being alive what's the purpose of marriage the purpose of marriage is to give yourself the purpose of marriage is to give yourself to your husband to give yourself to your wife but when you engage in pornography like you can't do that you can't because you're giving to yourself you're giving to that sexual desire so how can can you give yourself as a man, married man or woman, how can you give yourself to your wife or your husband if you can't even um, 
if you can't even, uh, what should we call it? Like, how can you be selfless if you're so selfish? Like, you can't be both at once. It's like what Daniel was saying. You are either worshiping God or you're worshiping the devil. Like, you can't be both. Like, you're doing one or the other. Um, and so it ruins marriages because it's like, imagine, like, a married woman. Heather Kim talked about, like, a married woman who's married to this man for, what, two, two years, four years, five years, ten years. And then all of a sudden, it's like, you find out that your husband's addicted to pornography and he never told you the betrayal, the hurt. It's like, you're supposed to trust me. You're supposed to, you know, just like, it's all these trust issues. And then it goes back, it hurts um, the spouse, right? The one who's not addicted because it makes them think like, was I just not good enough? Is that why you ran to pornography? It was like, I just not good enough. And it just, the devil comes and he divides that's the big problem. He divides and he conquers because again, pornography, you're enslaved to your sexual desires and there's no self mastery. You don't love that person. You don't love your spouse the way that God loves them. You love them the way the devil is asking you to love them. You don't become, you don't act on your human instinct anymore. You're enslaved to that desire. And that's like, that's what ruins marriages. That's what ruins relationships. Um, especially for those who keep that addiction hidden and it hurts it hurts so much because it's like we don't like no one wants that you know <laughs> yeah it's interesting you say about like the, the division because I know um our lady of Fatima and like one of her secrets or I don't know it, it's a little confusing the third secret her just like, mm-hmm. yeah ever something like that part a is revealed part b is not but you know, she did say, like, um, the ruin of families will come, and I most definitely think we see that, especially with the rise in mm-hmm. pornography use and the divorce rates. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've, I've just been doing some research. Um, shout out to Dr. Taylor Marshall. Um, there's... Oh, I love it! <laughs> he breaks down a letter that Archbishop Vigano wrote to Donald Trump, uh, oh. and it's not... That letter is completely different from what we're talking about, but uh, Dr. Taylor shows a picture of Baphomet or the devil, and the devil has a tattoo on his forearms, solve it et collagula, um, and I guess it means dissolve, or solve it, dissolve, and then congeliate. So basically, the devil's plan is kind of dissolve the truth and almost divide and conquer, but then divide, conquer, and then bring back in the devil's distorted version of truth. Uh, mm-hmm. He does that with every one of his favorite sins, whether it's lust, greed, uh, envy. He dissolves the truth and he brings it back into a distorted form. Uh, and it's just disgusting. And um, like from personal, sadly from personal experience, I've seen how, and I know I've just heard from other guys, other brothers, it's just like, you see the stuff that you watch in porn and then you want to try it with your girlfriend. You want mm-hmm. to this is your new thing simply almost like you're almost treating them like a toy obviously an object mm-hmm. and so it's truly one of the greatest devil's forms of brainwashing and, and talking about janelle's friend where like oh kind of peer pressure other guys oh you don't want to watch porn you're not a man and mm-hmm. obviously we, we all know that's a total lie but look so much of the culture is like you know you got to smoke weed now you got to you know not do you gotta, uh, watch porn to be a man or you got to do this to be a man you got to do this to be a man but it's like anyone talking about just being holy that that's what makes a true man and a true woman is following mm-hmm. god's will and so um mm-hmm. so good at using especially me um you know because this is the thing uh so much of like media in itself the church says it's amoral it's neither good nor bad but the devil is so great at using the media for bad whether it's through social media whether it's through the news channels, whether it's through music, TVs, mm-hmm. pornography. And so, um, yeah, it's just, I guess, it would be, what would be some uh, resources that people could use? Those good, there's good media that can help people to get through this struggle if they are struggling with whoever's listening to this. Yeah, um, there. Well, like, so, um, I think the best resource out there, um, and we've all heard this, but the best resource out there that you can ever start with is just like, 
like prayer, personal prayer and praying and acknowledge, pray, not just like praying where you just like, like, um, you just like get on your knees and like you do this, but like, or like the Our Father Hail Mary, but the type of prayer that I'm talking about is like vulnerable personal prayer where you tell God that you are struggling with this addiction and that you need help and that you, that this is something you want to change in your life. Because I know the difference between the people who I've seen in my life who's been enslaved to pornography, the ones who began praying and bringing that to God and bring it into light and the ones who are still in the darkness. And so um, prayer and asking someone to pray with you and come in like making that making that dark secret like that dark secret sin and bringing it into light because that is how you are going to heal and that is how you are going to be free is like that number one step prayer and invitation invitation of god invitation of someone you love and trust to help you with that to someone who you know is going to pray with you um and speaking of prayer um i sent janelle i sent cat not janelle i sent cat um this uh sexual healing prayer and it's a really good really awesome deliverance prayer and it's where you are calling out the sin the sexual sin in the name of jesus and it's written out for you you just have to read it out loud and follow the directions and i know definitely a good amount of people and i myself have prayed with it a couple times i know a good amount of people who has found so much healing from that um and so prayer is number one um number two is um there's all these talks on pornography and there's all these um different talks that we all have like mentioned actually that we've all briefed on compromise purity father shanka kali um dr taylor marshall and there's all these talks that give you literally the steps on how to break free from pornography um and it's like I may not be the one qualified to give like everyone the answer because everyone is different and everyone has their different situations. But these people who've been there, done that, lived that life are free and they're happy and they're joyful and they give their testimony and they tell you how you can get free. Because what the devil is really good at doing is he's really good at getting you into isolation. He's really good at making you feel like that you're alone in this, that you can't do this, that you're not worthy of coming back to the church. But whoever is listening and wants to be free, like to be free of this, it's just like you need to know first and foremost that there is a place for you to come back and that there's no sin, especially pornography or masturbation that is bigger than God's love and mercy. And so it's like, that's why number one was prayer and reaching out because it's like, it's so easy to just, uh, to not say anything. The spirit of mutinous, right? It's so easy to not, to not come out about that because of the shame, because of the hurt, because of the enslavement. But it's like that simple desire to want to be better is enough to break free from that addiction. And um, prayer, these talks, and to just know that, yes, that there are people, and if you are listening to this, like, you may struggle and with sexual temptation and with sin and, and lust and all that stuff, but that doesn't mean that you're no good. And that's where it always comes down to that first. And that's why I've always just, like, that's why I love talking about this because people that's what people need to hear it's like people don't want to say anything because they don't want to hear that they're gross the devil is already telling them that they're gross <laughs> people don't want to like have them point like out their ugliness and their wounds like that's what the devil does and so it's like there's a place for you like the lord loves you and um yeah that's one of like the like the two biggest resources, right? Reaching out, prayer, listening to these talks. <laughs> so, I actually wanted to, when you were talking about like prayer, I wanted to share this from like a sister. So, um, the reason why all three of us know each other, and for those audience listening, um, we've mentioned this before, but we were part of this youth ministry called CFC Youth, and every year they have a national conference. Not this year, but <laughs> the previous years. Um, the last one, last year, 2019, was in University of San Diego. And we had this sister. Her name's uh, Frances Issa, oh. but also I know her as Moana May. Um, she <laughs> struggled with pornography. 
And this was really, really powerful because as a girl, not many people share that. Or, you know, everyone thinks that putting on is a guy problem, but it's not, you know, it affects both genders. Um, and something that she's really, that she shared um, regarding like the prayer, her, the quote that they put was, I stopped venting and started praying because I didn't need sympathy. I needed strength. Mm-hmm. And so, <laughs> Amen. But, um, it just like when you were touching on prayer, I'm like, yes, like, I think that's where it starts it off. Even if like, mm-hmm. you don't know how to pray for those who are listening, even if you're just like, well, I don't even know where to begin. That's exactly where you start is telling God, God, I don't know where to begin. <laughs> you're like, I don't even yeah. know. It says that. Yeah. Like, like he'll go like, his mercy is bigger than any any sin that that you can commit. His mercy and love is so great. Yeah, amen, amen. And just like real quick, literally the person who was uh, the good friend of mine who um came out to me after I listened to the uncompromising purity talk, like she literally had no idea what to do. Right? It's like God, like I don't know how to like get better than this. Like I don't know what this first step is. And I'm sure in that moment she said like a, a short little prayer and a, somehow that slipped into our conversation and then boom it's like she gets this talk that I just went to on like pornography and it's like when you pray and when you make that conscious act to pray and to want to be better and to want to not live this life anymore um 100 the lord provides in one way or another whether that, whether that's through another person a priest coming back to the church reaching out therapy whatever that may be so yeah yeah i wanted to bring up a a couple other things that I've personally used to help me. Um, there's a couple things. Um, I had a confession about last year. And the priest was like, have you thought about fasting? And and, and he's like, that really changed mm. my whole belief on fasting. And I realized how much fasting truly allows you. Because what fasting does, it, it's a denial of yourself, a denial of what you want. And so it obviously... Going back to what you were saying in the beginning, it's like self-mastery and self-discipline. And if you can deny yourself something that you love, whether it's like I'm fasting from uh, something as simple as like, oh, I love boba. Okay, I'm not going to get boba this week. Or, um, you know, I'm not going to eat breakfast. Or I'm not going to have any sugar drinks, only water. Those self-denials allow you to strengthen your relationship with mm-hmm. yourself almost that like, hey, like, I don't need this. And it can start with something as simple as food, but then it'll help you to train you to be able to say, I don't need porn. I don't need it. to." Mm-hmm. Um, and then Matt Frad has a program called Strive 21. It's kind of like a forum where there's a question every day and you go on there and you'll see other people's responses. It's all guys at least on that one. Um, but that's a 21 day program that's available. Strive21.com, I believe. Uh, a great app by Life Team is the Victory app. It's really, really good because um, what you do on there is you just check in. Uh, it'll be like, how are you doing today? And if you do fall, um, oh, gosh, if I, I, I can't do it because if I did, it, it would show that I would fall. But I would, uh, it asks you questions when you do fall. It would say, like, what time of the day was it? Where did you do it? Ba- bathroom, a bathroom, ba- I can't say. Bedroom, Bed- bedroom <laughs> bathroom. Yeah. You know, a friend's house or, you know, wherever it may be. It, so write down, it'll, you put down where you did it, what time, how are you feeling, bored, lonely, tired, stressed, angry. Um, and then what was the trigger? Was it social media? Was it a friend? Was it someone, some, something someone said? Um, and then you have accountability partners on there as well. So say I would have another brother on there who's my partner. He would get a notification that I fell, that I went into, I looked at pornography and masturbated. So I highly recommend that, not just for guys, but guys or girls who are struggling with it. It's a great app, uh, great app from a life team called Victory. And then... I think there's Covenant Eyes. Oh, yeah, Covenant Eyes oh, yeah, is really good, too. Mm-hmm. I, like a, I think it's like, I, I don't think it's a paper. It's basically like kind of parental control, but mm-hmm. you set the own yeah. control so that, you know, it blocks some sites, I believe, yeah. or some things that you can't see. Yeah, covenant eyes, and, and just lastly, accountability. I mean, we've talked about this before, right? I, I think humbling yourself to be like telling one of your friends, like, hey, I struggle with this, right? Because this first step is you got to humble yourself to tell yourself, I have a problem. Then telling God, mm-hmm. telling your people in your life that you love. Um, and I think for me, lately, what's helped is just um, kind of like how we've been talking, right? We bring the darkness to light. 
I started just talking like God out loud when no one's home, but I'm like, God, I'm happy. Thoughts. Help me. And every time those thoughts go away. So really bring mm -hmm. that darkness, bringing them to light, bringing them to God. Mm -hmm. And God does what he always does, which clears the path and, and just brings that peace and gets the lustful thoughts out of your mind. So um, going back, we should always start with prayer. And that's, like you said, that's the foundation. And then how can we do these other actions, whether it's through fasting, whether it's through apps, whether it's mm -hmm. listening to talks. Mm -hmm. um, accountability. accountability. And accountability, yeah. 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 And on accountability, having, if, for, if you're a girl struggling with that, having a girl accountability partner. And if you're a guy, having a guy accountability partner. Because um, that's, it's very different, right? It's like, um, if, uh, right, you like a, a like let's say like there's a brother who's struggling and it's like let's say like you're really close with with your girlfriend it's like you know you tell her everything but it's like your girlfriend can't help you um maybe can't relate to some of these things as much as a brother can right and that can be like a, that's like a sacred topic right and it's um I was just told by Father Sean Kilcully and like Father Father Mark Schmitz even was like if you're gonna get it to tell somebody get a brother or sister because sisters there's something that only sisters can relate to and that trigger us the way that it can't trigger guys um and that's like where you're gonna find a lot of peace and and um when you have that accountability and you get so discouraged your accountability partner the whole purpose of it is for yes to keep you accountable but most importantly to keep you going to push you because I know for those who struggle um with like any addiction right it's so easy to fall back into it and it's so tempting it's like you feel so powerless over it and you look just fall like you just you hit rock bottom and it's so it's like I want to be clean but then like two months later like you fall again and it's like people just like go back down that path but accountability what it does it gets you back up and say like no you're clean for two months keep going yeah. like you're gonna fall but that's a part of the journey like you fall and you get back up that's what mercy is all about that's what confession is all about so um one more thing that I just want to like emphasize on when you were talking about like when you have an accountability partner, don't don't have it be your boyfriend or girlfriend. I can't emphasize that enough. I can't tell you how many times um, <laughs> I experienced and I received and God gifted me with these beautiful, virtuous friendships. Like I used to tell my boyfriend everything and I've seen the detrimental effects of doing that yeah. because mm -hmm. it's just um, exhausting and detrimental to yourself but also to your partner, you know? Mm -hmm someone and expect them to be your savior for everything and right so, yes they can be your best friend yes they can be your boyfriend but if you have them and expect them to complete you and heal you and um help you overcome all of your struggles it's not gonna work out it really mm -hmm. is gonna mm -hmm. create um a rift between you and your partner and um yeah i really want to emphasize that thank you for pointing that out because that's a really mm -hmm. yeah that is yeah and I know a couple of people where they've um where they reached out like for accountability but they've maybe reached out to the wrong people and have felt like that uh like maybe for brothers for example right like where a brother reaches out to a brother and says like hey I'm really struggling with this addiction but then that brother doesn't take them seriously and is like oh no dude like no like you're fine like you're not struggling with that like no, like I think that um, if you experience that or if you do experience that, right, from my brothers and even from my sisters out there, like if you reach out and maybe you reach out to the wrong person and instead of receiving help, you receive like that backlash and you are even more discouraged. I want to encourage you to keep going and to ask God to help you reach out to the right brother or sister because a true brother or sister, a true friend will not laugh at your misery and will not will not laugh at you in your addiction right right daniel like a true brother will pick you up and be like oh man like <laughs> like let's let's get better because yeah i definitely know um like someone who they tried reaching out and it was very discouraging for them and it hurt them and it kept them going in that addiction for a while and it's like it's like that's not where you're called to be and it's like praise the lord he reached out to the right person 
right? And then he got, and he's getting the help that he needs. And so brothers and sisters, if you feel discouraged, like hope is out there. There is someone out there who wants to help you. I want to help. These people want to help. <laughs> so. Um, one last question for you. Do you have any last thoughts or any last things you would want to share to the, those who are listening and those who are watching this? Um, that if you have the slightest bit like the slightest, like the tiny mustard seed desire to want to be better, to want to be free. If you have like, just like, you just, you know, deep in your heart that this addiction to pornography or whatever addiction it may be is not what you experience, like, you know, it's not what you want your life to be, that there is so much help out there and that there's so much hope for you to, to break free of this addiction. And I've seen it. I've, experienced it um I was never like super enslaved to pornography but I was exposed to it at a very young age my cousins normalized it for me and even to this even though like I it didn't become an extreme addiction for me it's something that distorted my view on like uh, on sex for a long time and my view on men and my view on like um just like human intimacy and the Lord has like graciously and abundantly healed that and um, when it com when you say yes to being healed in your addiction to pornography, that um, you're gonna get attacked and it's gonna be very, very, very hard, right? But um, victory does not come without a cross. Yes. And we all know that when you pray the rosary, yes. that we pray the sorrowful mystery before we pray the glorious mystery. And we all know in the Catholic Church that Jesus died before he had to resurrect. And so like when it, comes to, when it comes to addictions like these and when it comes to pornography, that's not the final battle. And, and I know it's really easy to think that I'm enslaved to this and it doesn't matter if I've been struggling, like I've been struggling for like 10 years, 15 years, that there's no freedom for that, that the, the price that um, Christ paid on the cross is way bigger. And I just really, really want everyone <laughs> to really, 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 really know that because we are not called to live in slavery. Like we are called to live in freedom. Amen. And that's, that's what it is. So. <laughs> so, yeah. so, 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 so much. <laughs> You're so, 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 so welcome. All glory to God. <laughs> I know so much can, can benefit and like so much food can come out of this episode. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. It was fun. It's always fun talking about this stuff, you know? <laughs> you, real quick before we end, can you show us your shirt and tell us uh, where we can find it? Yes, of course. I'm not buff, but <laughs> um, so. It says, people does not equal products. And on the bottom, you can't really see it, but it says, stop the demand, porn fuels into the demand. Um, and I got this shirt from fightthenewdrug.org.com. And um, they are an organization, nonprofit organization. They're not religious and they're not um, tied to anything government related, but um, they promote very much the harms of pornography they promote the harms of uh, masturbation of human trafficking sexual human trafficking and how pornography and human tra trafficking are combined i get all my statistics and my info from them and even though they're not religious and they are not any sort of like christian group they very much give all the stats all the evidence all the research all the support that you need to know why pornography is bad for you. It's bad for the mind, for the heart, for your health, and just for the economy, for your relationships. And it's just bad all around. And we can go like go more about that. Like you can learn more about that on the website. Um, and there's so many shirts out there. They're really cute <laughs> and they're really cool. And the reason why it's called Fight the New Drug is because it's um, pornography has become that drug for many, many people. And we all know that drugs aren't good for you. They harm your health and your mind and your emotional being in so many ways. And porn does that same thing. And it does it on an emotional, mental, social, and spiritual level. 
So um, if you don't believe like any evidence or anything that we have talked about when it comes to why pornography is bad, they will give you literally an article on every single question you have about pornography and why it is bad. So it's caused by the new drug. Thank you so much Thank for you. sharing. Mm -hmm. All right, well, um, thanks everyone for <laughs> listening in. Thank you. <laughs> who are listening or watching be sure to like comment subscribe yeah, um all that stuff, all that stuff. <laughs> and then if you ever have questions just feel free to contact us and we'll get in touch with her as well um so that she can she can answer those questions for you if we're not able to as well yes yeah all right well we'll end this episode in prayer as the way we started in the name of the father and the son and holy spirit Dear Lord, just thank you for allowing us to talk about this tough conversation that many of us would like to ignore, not bring to the light. But thank you, Lord, for allowing us to bring this to the light, help people to bring this to light in their life as well, help them to see the slavery, this new drug, the slavery that is in general. Allow us to uh, help those who are dealing with this. Um, allow us. Allow, allow those who are listening that do struggle with this to be vulnerable and open up to others so that it can be a prayer warrior for them to help them in their addiction. Uh, Lord, we just lift up to you this. Um, we pray for chastity for everyone. We pray that we can all grow in holiness. We can all grow in love for one another and stop using people as objects, but rather use bring people to you and, and really be that instrument of you and the only way to be an instrument used to not be a slave to sin. So, Lord, we just lift up this to you. We entrust this with your blessed mother who say, Hail Mary, full Lord, of grace. Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord is with you. Oh, Amen. Oh, blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Holy Mary, Mary Mother, Mother of God, God pray for us sinners. And all God's angels and saints, pray for us. Pray for us. Pray for us. Lord, it's good. Amen. 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 See Thank ya. you. Yak out. Yak out. <laughs> Woo.